We want to go to Kyiv as well, where we're joined by Denis Pilash, Ukrainian political scientist, historian, member of the Ukrainian Democratic Socialist Organization. He's also an editor at Commons, Journal of Social Criticism. Um, Denis Pilash, thanks for joining us again, uh, but certainly under very different circumstances. How was this rebellion? Um, if it is a short-lived rebellion, or is it the beginning of something, perceived in Kyiv, we just played the president, Zelensky, addressing Russians and Russian soldiers in Russian, uh, which is actually his first language. Thanks, Amy. So, first of all, we should say that even uh, when uh, Russia was caught by this uh, rebellion, mutiny, um, attempt of a coup. Uh, still, um, Ukrainian cities have been uh, attacked by Russian missiles, as usual, as they have been uh, in recent two months almost constantly. So we had uh, people, uh, civilians, uh, killed in Kyiv, in Kherson, and other places. So uh, ultimately, not much has changed in, in terms of this uh, war on, on Ukrainians, including ordinary civilian Ukrainians. But uh, lots of people were uh, completely agreeing with this take that uh, Russia's militarism now is ripping uh, what it saw. So it brought death and destruction to Ukraine. And now the same boomerang came back to, um, to Russia itself, uh, namely in this uh, the same entity, the Wagner Group. And like uh, private military companies throughout the world, Wagner was established and as, as an arm for uh, shady, sneaky dealings of its superiors, namely the Russian state and Putin's regime, um, and also giving them this plausible uh, deniability for all these deeds. And as a rule, these uh, PMCs, they uh, display um, much less legal and moral constraints in regular armies, and thus uh, they commit more war crimes. Just think about uh, Nisur Square massacre by uh, Blackwater in Iraq. But Wagner specifically, uh, whose command uh, is stalked by uh, notorious open Nazi sympathizers, um, like its founder, Utkin, uh, so it turned their extremely brutal way of, of uh, waiting, wasting human lives uh, uh, almost to a brand that was promoted by state propaganda. So uh, there are constant war crimes committed in Syria, in Ukraine, in African countries. Um, they include um, executions of civilians, prisoners of war, of their own men. Um, they include uh, rape and sexual violence. They include um, uh, things like torture and extrajudicial killings of Ukrainians in uh, Kyiv Oblast and um, this massacre of hundreds of people in uh, Mura, in Mali, and both were uh, occurred almost simultaneously, like in spring uh, 2022. Uh, so uh, the Wagner Group is also heavily implied to have killed Russian uh, journalists who went to investigate their uh, dealings in the Central African Republic, and also uh, to have eliminated um, those of um, these pro-Russian irredentist um, warlords in, in Donbass, in eastern Ukraine, that were uh, deemed um, no more useful for, for, for the Kremlin. So uh, this is the way uh, they, they were doing uh, this, um, their regular activities abroad. And uh, you can just imagine what they can do to uh, Russia uh, the people of uh, what's now Russian Federation itself. So uh, in Africa, they, they engaged in some kind of 19th century uh, type uh, colonialism, uh, pillaging communities, uh, looting national resources, and installing military dictatorships. And actually, I think that the, uh, there were lots of um, parallels, lots of uh, analogies that emerged in uh, in Russian and Ukrainian social media uh, concerning uh, what can be compared to this uh, short-lived mutiny of uh, Prigozhin's forces. And uh, lots were uh, brought up, but I think that the closest one uh, was exactly uh, what you have already mentioned in the news uh, about the, uh, the recent and ongoing uh, conflict in Sudan, where um, a part of uh, of the ruling uh, military junta, namely um, these uh, rapid support forces, formerly the Janjaveed 
militias that were involved into genocidal acts in Darfur. Uh, they uh, broke uh, with uh, the rest of the junta. And both these sides, they are equally oppressive, equally anti-democratic, and both uh, are Wagner clients. So uh, here we see this parallel, and I completely agree with uh, Professor uh, uh, Khrushcheva that um, this is a way uh, where you see an extremely uh, oppressive authoritarian uh, regime, and uh, it's, it was opposed at this point by its part that is even more ultranationalist, outright, far-right, fascist. So uh, this is something that uh, both Putin and Prigozhin, they embody something very uh, terrible for both people inside Russia and outside Russia. So uh, as another analogy that was also brought up was uh, Mussolini's march in Rome. So you can, you can see the parallels.